Welcome to Real Time, Florida Sportsman. This week we're heading out to Clearwater Beach and we're hunting for hogs. It's time to find the shortest route to the hottest bite. We scan the Florida Sportsman community looking for the best fishing reports and travel to make real anglers our local guides. Give me some of that! Together we let you in on secret spots and hometown moves. That's what I'm talking about! Oh yeah, <laughs> she's done for now. This week we headed to Clearwater Beach. We did something totally different. We headed offshore, looking for hogfish on hook and line. Oh, look at that hogfish! Oh, it's a hog! Hey, hog. Oh my god! Oh, cool. That's how you signify the female from the male. My first one on a rod and reel. Awesome, man. That's a nice one, brother. All coming up on Real Time Florida Sportsman. This week we're in Clearwater Beach. You know, we've spent a lot of time filming over here in the Tampa Bay area, mainly inshore. But let me tell you, this place has an awesome offshore fishery. Grouper, snapper, but you know, we've come over here to do something kind of unique. Um, something totally different that's becoming more and more popular. We are catching hogfish on hook and line. Our plan was to meet up with this week's guest host, Cody Chevis, at the boat ramp, launch the Triton, and head about 20 miles offshore. Leaving out of Clearwater Pass, you know, the conditions looked absolutely beautiful. Light winds, a little overcast, but really, it was kind of deceiving. We were sitting right on the boundary of a cold front that was pushing through. We knew our weather window was going to be small, but we hoped just to get out there in the morning, get on the bite, and get back before the rain started. We got to the first spot, you know, and on, looking on that Ray Marine, you're not really looking for a lot of relief. I mean, these are small little ledges, and actually, Cody was saying, we don't want to be sitting even right on top of those ledges. These hogfish are known to be off the ledges onto the sandy areas. All right, first spot. How far off are we here? We're about 25 miles, 60 foot of water, okay. taking a piece of natural bottom. Um, pretty simple rig we got going on here, a little knocker rig a little one ounce weight and a one or two aught circle hook. Out here in the Gulf of Mexico, they require you to use a circle hook when fishing for reef fish. So okay. you gotta abide by those rules. And uh, we're just gonna get after it here. We're gonna catch grunts and porgies for probably 20, 30 minutes. And then once all the faster fish kind of slow down, the hogs will move in and that's when we're gonna get our bites from them. And really this is like our trout rods or our redfish yeah, rods. Yeah, that's what's cool about it. You know, three, four years ago, if we were in 60 foot of water, we'd be using 80 pound mono with a three, four ounce sinker fishing for grouper and that's why we never caught these things. So <laughs> we downsized our tackle and the same Start stuff you'd fish for 15 inch trout. We're trying to catch a, you know, five, six pound hogfish on. Let's get on it while the weather's good. All right, brother, let's do it. The tackle that we're using is so basic. It's amazing. These are trout rods. I'm surprised. We're bringing these things out in 60 feet of water, looking for hogfish with the possibility of hooking on some grouper. So Cody's saying too, you know, here's probably the big secret, long piece, 20 pound fluorocarbon, you know, probably liter shy, so nice long piece of fluoro, small hook, one ounce weight, knocker rig, pretty simple. Just drop a piece of shrimp down. He's going grocery shopping. No, oh, He's trying. You feel there you go, that. George, you stopped him. You think that's him? Oh, that's him. That's a good one. That's a real good one. <laughs> you really feel it on that 15 pound braid. Yeah, brother. See how they kind of resemble a mutton snapper, that first little run? Yeah. Just let it set the, sit there on the bottom. Digging, digging for the bottom. Yeah. Grocery shopping. I got a spot for you. The Yeti. No, look at this porgy. Monster porgy. Oh my goodness. That's about as big as they get. Whoo! The giant porgy. And those are edible. Oh yeah, we're gonna put him in the cooler. All right. You know, talking to Cody, he said this this bite was gonna be non-stop but there was gonna be a lot of weeding through other fish. The, the porgies, you know, the, the grunts, even the smaller grouper, there was gonna be a lot of bycatch. And you know, the guy wasn't lying. Immediately I'm hooked up to a porgy of all porgies, but I was kind of surprised. He said, these are actually good eating. We decided to go ahead and we threw it in the Yeti. This segment brought to you by Wiley X, absolute premium protection.
You grew up fishing these waters? Yeah, man, I was born right here in Bennington Shores. It's located right in between Johns Pass and Clearwater Pass. Grew up fishing mainly inshore and on the piers and stuff, and kind of from there branched to the offshore stuff. That's a great area to do inshore and offshore. The kind of natural evolution of yeah, pier you know, rat to pier rat to fishing 100 miles offshore. So it's a good place to learn though. Up here you're stuck in one spot and you got to learn to be stealthy and tricky if you want to catch fish. Make the best of it. You've done pretty well in the tournaments too, right? Turn tarpon tournaments. Yeah, man. Tarpon, redfish, kingfish. Do it all. Yeah, do it all. Keeps you busy. The reason this area is so great for bottom fishing is that it's just the bottom contour. You gotta imagine, we've gone 20 miles offshore and we're only fishing in 60 feet of water. It's a real gradual, gentle slope heading out and there is just, the whole area is peppered with great bottom that fish can just hide in. So you gotta weed through a bunch of these. Yeah, these porgies and the grunts and stuff, they're a lot faster than those hogfish. So these things, they come in and, you know, if you're not getting bit every drop, you're not in the right spot. Okay. And it's good, you know, like a lot of people like to eat these porgies and grunts. It's good to keep a couple of them, but release the majority of them because those are the fish that kind of bring everything else to the party. You know, the groupers and the hogfish, they like to hang around with this stuff. So if you come out to the spot and just completely vacuum clean it, all these small fish. It's incredible. It's the color of the fins on this thing. When yeah, it's they're in pretty the water. Fish. We call that electric blue. I know, it's crazy. Also, it's just, it's a unique color. Cool fish. So you want that bait off the bottom? You want to sit on the bottom? No, you want that shrimp right on the bottom. And with this knock rig we're using, paired with this 10 pound braid, you can kind of feel everything. So the okay. key is drop it down to the bottom and you want probably about a foot and a half, two foot of slack. Okay. With your pointed finger just on that braid. And a lot of times those hogfish will just feel a tap tap mm -hmm. or they're just going to slowly swim away with it. And you know, that two foot is kind of like a spring. You let them take that little two foot of slack you have and just reel down. You know, with these circle hooks, you can't really set the hook. Okay. You just kind of kind of reel, just like any other, any circle hook fishing you do for snook or whatnot. The bite for hogfish started a little slower than I think even Cody was hoping for. You know, we were definitely weeding through a bunch of fish, but we just couldn't get that hogfish bite. I was getting a little nervous too. The weather was closing in on us. Everywhere you looked around us, there were storms approaching. You know, the, the radar was just lighting up and I knew our time would be limited. We moved around a little bit, trying some different areas, and then finally, Cody got the hogfish bites. What do you think? Yeah, biting kind of like it. Oh boys, got a little hogfish. Oh, that's what we came for. Look at that. That's him right there. Yep, it's a little female hog right there. It's legal. Beautiful fish though. See his pinks and dark reds, orange tips. And a couple years ago, you'd only spear these things. Now we're catching them on hook and line. That's amazing. We're gonna get a couple bigger ones, but that's a nice, nice little fish to eat right there. Ooh, that's what we came for. Excellent eating too. Oh, the best. And the funny thing is people think they're a snapper. They're actually in the RAS family. They're not even in the snapper yeah, family. Yeah, if you go to a lot of restaurants, they actually, they'll call them a hog snapper. But you're right, they are in the RAS, the RAS family. They're, you can kind of see them. They got little teeth like parrotfish are down there munching on that coral and trying to get those crabs and stuff out of there. They're crustacean eaters. So we're just using shrimp out here. Does it matter? Live shrimp, dead shrimp, frozen? Just... No, you know, it doesn't really matter live or frozen. They'll, they'll eat them no matter what. But the best thing to do is go ahead and buy you you know, 10, 12 dozen shrimp if you're gonna go do it all day. And what I like to do is I put half of them in a live well, so I'll put five dozen live well, and then I'll put the other five dozen in a plastic bag and put them on ice for a couple hours. Cause that firms that meat up. So when these grunts and porgies are picking at it, it's a little bit harder for them to take it off the hook. And you go through less shrimp when you do that. That's a good little tip though, if you're gonna come out here and with three, four people is to conserve bait. You ever try squid or anything? They will eat squid. You know, really the best bait if you can get it is live pass crabs. But this time of year in the winter time, they're generally hard to get. But if uh, you got about a silver si silver dollar size pass crab, it's hard for a you know, five, six pound hogfish to pass that up.
This segment is brought to you by Eagle Claw Trocar, the sharpest fish hooks in the world. It's about to get serious. Yeah, so that six hour window we thought we had. Uh, <laughs> Just dropped down to a about an hour and a half. <laughs> What they make rain gear for? Yes, sir. Got my jacket out of here. Fish are already wet. They shouldn't care. Nope. Nothing a little suiting and booting can't fix. Red grouper on light, 15 pound spider wire. I mean, as soon as you hooked one of those grouper, you knew immediately that it was something different. You know, it was a struggle to get them off the bottom, but I tell you, on that light tackle, it is so much fun. Get him, bro. Amazing, those grouper, those little pieces of shrimp. Little tiny shrimp head. Is that a keeper? That's a keeper. Is that dinner? The red grouper. Nice. Yeah, brother. They gotta be how big? 20 inches, that one's about 22. So right now we're having a little uh, hogfish appetizer and a little grouper. Little red grouper <laughs> sandwich, yeah. <laughs> it's a nice grouper for shallow water. Not Especially a bad one. on that light tackle. Yeah, 10 pound braid. That's fine. Ate fun. a piece of shrimp. Shrimp head. Let's throw him in the Yeti. Awesome, man. Now, I know we're out here looking for hogfish, but I'm just as happy catching these grouper. These are great eating fish, and I'm happy to throw them in the Yeti. Another oh, big my. old red. Oh. Yeah, get him away from that rock. <sighs> Got him. Nice. Tackle here. Yeah, that, those first couple feet are the most important. Especially this light tackle. Another keeper. Barely hooked. Whew. Look at that. Nice fish, bro. So this is a red grouper. Typically catch them in the same kind of areas? Yeah, they they run with the hogfish. You know, we're fishing this little rock pile right here. And season's open right now. On, season's what's the open, regulations on it these? It's open January 1st, so. And how big do those have to be? They gotta be 20 inches. This one's probably about 22, 23 inches. Just a beautiful fish, 45 foot of water. That's a really nice fish. Excellent eating, right? Awesome, brother. You know, dropping that bait down to the bottom, you're hopeful every time for a hogfish. But there were so many porgies and so many grunts, you just had to weed through them. But I tell you, looking over that side, you get that different, unique bite. The, the fight feels totally different, and all of a sudden, you just see that orange-brown fish coming from the bottom. There you go, George. Woo <sighs> Digging on you, brother. <sighs> it's awesome on that light tackle, isn't it? <gasps> These things are tough. Well, how many can you keep? Oh, the reds. What's that, brother? How many reds are you allowed to keep? Oh, look at that hog oh, fish. It's a hog. Big hog. Oh, my God. Finally. Finally. Look at that. That's what we came for. Oh, <laughs> oh That man. is my hurt first one on rod and reel. That's a good one. It's like a four pounder. Woo! I've been trying to get it, trying to get it, sitting out here in the weather, making the best of it. Look at this. Look at that. That is a face. After all the rain, the thunder. Look at that incredible. The teeth, are all of them like that? Or that was just got bad dental yeah, work? Yeah, that's, that's a big male. See, you, you can see he's been using his teeth crunching on that coral. They're almost like a parrotfish. You'll see him down there just crunching. Look at this. That is the ugliest face. It is ugly, but it's the best tasting meat there is. Look at those colors up here, that band. Yeah, no, almost band. like a grunt with the coloring here. Yep. They're cool. That's how you signify the female from the male. And this, I mean, this is just kind of out of this world. How that it's, big it's old a, snout, yeah. 
Just sits there and just feeds down on the bottom yep, like that. Just like that, with his head down, munching on that coral, that sand. They dig those shrimp and those my manna shrimp and little crabs that live down there. That's what they eat. It's my first one on a rod and rail. Awesome, man. It's a nice one, brother. Congrats. Thanks. This segment brought to you by Yo Zuri. Fish the best. What was, what was neat to see was as the weather conditions worsened, the bite got better. And, and you see this a lot of the time. You know, the barometer's falling ahead of this cold front, and I really think the fish can kind of sense this, and it's a trigger for them to feed. And this was the perfect example of that. The bite started out pretty slow in the morning, and more and more as that weather deteriorated, the bite just kept getting better. Ow! Is that another one? Might be. Might be. Or it's a big porgy, one of the two. No, oh, starting to feel hog here. Nope. Yep, another hog. Are nice you kidding? Hog. Look yeah, at that. brother, turn it on for us. Woo, all, you know, sitting out here, honestly, struggling for hours in the rain, and it just turned on one after the other now. Yeah, that's a good one. That's fat. perfect eating size. God, nice and fat. This one looks a little different than the last one. Yeah, you can see this banding in here is a lot lighter and the snout's a little bit smaller. That signifies a female, and that's a pretty big female. You know, he's, he's probably just, or she's just about to change to that, uh, that male sex. It's interesting on these fish, did some research, these are all born females. You know, males, uh, the snook are all born, mostly born males. This is a little different. Most of these are born females and part of the population switches over. Yeah, generally, you know, every fish you catch, the female's the bigger. Yeah. The bigger fish and with hogfish the male is actually the bigger one so it's kind of the opposite well this one's gonna they're eat. all gonna it, taste it, the same brother taste the same get it in the yeti as cody was saying to me that you don't want to sit right on the ledge you know we got the idea let's let's go ahead and drop his gopro down to the bottom and see what kind of structure we are you know we won't know until we get home but i tell you we dropped this thing down when we got home i was shocked on the amount of hogfish the amount of everything that was down there on the bottom. Got a good one, George? Yeah. Look at this hog. Nice hog? Nice hog. You! You're killing me, brother. Ooh, that's uh. a good one. Let me get this red grouper out of the way. <laughs> get that silly grouper out of my way. Woo! Oh, that's a good one, brother. Let me grab our landing net. <laughs> Look at that fish. Oh, goodness. Oh. <laughs> They're getting bigger. Oh, They're getting yeah. bigger. Hey, look at this. This is a cool. You don't catch too many of these. Oh, he's tagged. Look at this. I mean, this is, this is, what a day. The weather's horrible. We're sitting here in cold middle, front, cold front right. middle of winter. But the fish are chewing. Caught a little tagged grouper. Yep, FWC, it's one of the projects they do. and Pull the tag. Pull the tag, and we're going to call that in, and we're going to eat that later. Not a bad combo, <laughs> huh? Gosh, look at that fish. And look at the teeth on them. Beautiful, aren't they? Look at this. And when you're down there diving, that's exactly how they're swimming around, which is the coolest thing. This is out like this. And, and they look twice as big underwater, yeah. don't they? Nice fish, man. All right. Cody actually caught a red grouper that was tagged. And going back, looking at the GoPro footage, we actually saw this fish, you know, on the bottom, coming up to the GoPro before we even caught the thing. It is. Digging hard. Swimming out, yeah it is. It's is it the right one. one? I think so. He's swimming out. On that big old shrimp head. He's Call. swimming fast. Yeah, he's got to be one. Yep. Big <laughs> old hog. Look at that one. Woo! Brother, that's no. a good one right there. What do you think? We got thunder in the background. Thunder, lightning, January cold <laughs> front. 
We didn't even think we'd be able to get it done today. And we pulled, what, almost six, seven big hogfish in the last 30 minutes off the spot. No, remember how you started a race. I don't remember how you finished it. We had a slow start, man, and we we came through. Persevered. Awesome, man. This, this is a quality fish for 50 foot of water, and that's almost five and a half, six pound hogfish. Real elusive fish. First time I've ever fished from a hook and line. It's becoming really popular over here on the West Coast. And this is how now. you do it, man. That's, There's not much to that's it. That's that face you love. Oh, God, teeth. I think needs some dental work. We finally had enough. We're waterlogged. We're soaked to the bone. We've caught plenty of fish. The Yeti is filled. We decided, you know what, let's call it. Let's head back to Clearwater Beach. It was time to get warm, get changed, and head over to Salt Rock Grill. We met the chef at Salt Rock Grill and, and got a, you know, behind the scenes. He took us back, cleaned the fish, actually made us ceviche right there, took us into the kitchen, showed us preparing the food, and I tell you, I've never had such good eating fish in my life. You know, as fresh as it was, right from the gulf, right to the plate, prepared right in front of us. It was truly an awesome experience. That is awesome. Isn't that great? Oh, that it looks just shows that whole looks, fish. It looks a little bit crazy? different than when we caught it. <laughs> yeah. I think I think I like the way it looks now better. What about you? Right, right from the gulf to our plate. Yeah, everything looks amazing as always. Thanks, it's a pleasure. I can't wait wow. to eat this. I've been following Cody's fishing for a while, and you know, this was just one type of fishing that this guy has dialed in over here. And I tell you. It was an honor for him to share it with me and his experience I'll never forget. <laughs> his motor's away. Think so? No? Nope. nope, lizard fish. <laughs>